Right, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter two is plants and grapevines. So a vineyard owner is planting several new rows of grapevines and needs to know how many grapevines to plant in each row. She has determined that after measuring the length of a future row, she can use the following formula to calculate the number of vines that will fit in a row, along with the trellis and post assemblies that will need to be constructed at each end of the row. So we've been given a formula uh, to calculate um, it says V over here is the number of grapevines that will fit in a row. So we'll be given a formula to calculate that. So the terms in the formula are V is the number of grapevines that will fit in a row. R is the length of a row of the row in feet. E is the amount of space in feet used by an end point, oh sorry, end post assembly. S is the space between vines in feet. So we are to write a program that makes the calculation for the vineyard owner. The program should ask the user to input the following. The length of the row in feet looks like that's R. The amount of space used by an end post assembly in feet, it looks like that's E. The amount of space between between the vines in feet, it looks like that's S. Once the input data has been entered, the program should calculate and display the number of grapevines that will fit in the row. Okay, so let's start by asking the user uh, these this information because the program says write to write to program or the question says write to program that makes the calculation for the vineyard or the vineyard owner the program should ask the user to input the following these things so let's let's start by doing that we can use the input function to ask for information right for ask for input and so I'm going to start by asking the length of the row in feet so the input function I'm going to call that and the input function takes in an argument, what you want to ask the user to type. So I'm going to say, please enter the length of the row uh, in feet. So the input function is, uh, is going to pop up some kind of text box and it's going to allow the user to type in something. And whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. And so when it's being returned back to us, we need to start. We need a place to store it. Whatever is being returned is the length of the row in feet. So let's call it, create a variable and call it that. I'm going to call it length of row, um, length of row. Length of row, of row should be fine. Actually, let's put user in front of it. So user length of row, and then we're going to set it equal to whatever the input function returns. Now. If we we're going to be performing some calculations with this value, then we need to make sure that this value is an actual number because by default, the input function always returns a string. And so the length could be a floating point value like 2.5 or 6.8. It's not, it's, not it's not always going to be an int. And so we need to make sure that this is a floating point value, this value that's being returned. And so I'm going to wrap the float function around this input function, around everything that is being returned by the input function. And so we're going to store that in user, oops, length of row. I forgot the G here in length. Um, if that's how to spell it. Yeah, that's how to spell it. User length of row. Let's make sure this is an, actually uh, an uppercase L. So we stick with our camel case. So that's our um, user length of row. Now, let's fix uh, a few things before we move on. So I don't know if you see this gray line here, but this gray line is a guide for me to stick to 80 characters on a line, to type 80 characters on a line. It's a Python standard to type 80 characters on a line, and I want to stick to that. And so that means I need to break this line into two. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to break it somewhere around here. I can't just hit enter, right? I need to make sure that I am closing this string and concatenating with the beginning of the string so I have two strings just being joined by the plus sign and then once I have a plus sign I can go ahead and I can break it and to break a line in Python you type in the backslash the line continuation character and then you hit enter now to be fair if you are um, in parentheses you don't necessarily need the backslash you can just hit enter Python is okay with that, but it's a habit for me and I'm going to stick with that. It's a habit for me to always type the backslash. All right, so that's our user length of row. The next thing we want to ask the user is the amount of space used by an end post assembly. 
in feet. By the way, I know nothing about grip points. I don't even know what what these things are. <laughs> but we know how to program. <laughs> we know how to put together formulas. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So the amount of space used by an end post assembly. Um, let's call the input function similar, similarly like uh, just similar, similar to what we did up there, and ask the user, please type in. Um, the amount of space um, used by an end post assembly in feet. So again, the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box. It's going to allow the user to type in something. Whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. Um, and so when it's being returned back to us, we need a place to store it. What is being returned back to us is the amount of space used by an end post assembly. So let's create a variable to store that. Create a variable and call it amount. Oh, let's start by user amount uh, of space. It's going to be a long variable name used by end post assembly. Now, it's no problem to have super long variable names like this. If you know me uh, by now, you know that I love long variable names. It's a preference. You don't have to create long variable names. You can make it short. That's just, just a preference. It just helps me, um, you know, understand my code. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, user amount of space used by end post assembly. Um, we realize that again we're exceeding this line here so I'm going to break this line I'm going to close the string and concatenate it with the beginning of the string and I can break it somewhere around here actually no um, I'm still going to exceed so let's undo for a sec so we have one string I'm going to break somewhere around here close the string concatenate it with the beginning of the string and I'm going to break it somewhere around here before I break it I type in the backslash and hit enter still exceeding so I'm going to break it even more Close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, break it somewhere around here, hit enter. Still exceeding. Um, I could have I could have broken it maybe differently. So I'm gonna do one more time. So close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, and type in a backslash, hit enter. Should be good. Um, I could have broken it differently, but it's okay. Um, we're in we're before this line, so that's all that matters. Okay. Um, and then the last thing we want to ask the user is the amount of space between binds. So again, call that. Well, one more thing. Actually, let's hold on. So we need to make sure that this value is also a floating point value, right? So we need to wrap the float function around it. Um, let's see if we're going to exceed. So let's just delete this. All right. So call the float function around this, and uh, we're good. We didn't. We're not, we didn't exceed. All right. So. We need to make sure that whatever is being returned here is a floating point value before we store it here. Same thing, we need to get the third value, which is the amount of space between lines, call the input function, ask the user to please enter the amount of space between lines. So it's going to pop up a text box, allow the user to type in something, whatever is being typed is going to be returned back to us as a string and we need a place to store it what's being returned is the amount of space between binds so we can create a variable user amount of space between binds and that variable is going to store that the user amount 